Alrighty, this video is going over dividing decimals by decimals. This is priority standard 2.4. So our uh, goal today is I can find the quotient of two decimals. So if you see at the top of your paper, I can find the quotient of two decimals. So quotient of two decimals. That's what you're going to fill out on your lesson goal on the top of your paper for today. I can find the quotient. And if you remember, quotient means the answer to a division problem. So if I have 4 divided by 2, my quotient is 2. So this is what a quotient is. So that's what we're going to focus on today with decimals. Quotient of two decimals. So activity one, long division to find quotients. So these first two are ones that don't have a decimal in it, but the answer will have a decimal in it. So that's what we're going to practice. So 126 divided by eight. Remember the first number goes inside the box. This is called the dividend. The number we're dividing by always goes on the outside and this is called the divisor, okay? So 126 divided by eight. 8 goes into 1 no time, so I put an X there so I don't put a number on top. 8 goes into 12 one time. 1 times 8 is 8. Then I subtract. 12 minus 8 is 4. Then I bring down my next digit. Every time I bring down a digit, I see how many times does my divisor fit inside of it. So 8 goes into 46. We know 8 times 6 is 48, so it must be one less, so 5. 5 times 8 is 40, then we subtract, 46 minus 40 is 6. So in the past, a lot of times you probably wrote the answer as 15 with a remainder of 6, but we need to continue. We're writing our answer as a decimal, so we're going to continue by writing 126.0. We bring up the decimal, so we know our answer is 15 point something, so now I can bring the 0 down. I know 8 goes into 60 seven times, so I put the 7 right above that 0. 7 times 8 is 56. Subtract and I get 4. Then I bring down another 0. 8 goes into 40 five times. 5 times 8 is 40. Now when I subtract, I have 0 left over and I've used all my digits. So my quotient, or my answer, is 15.75. And it's important that we keep our numbers in columns so we can put the decimal in the right spot. 15.75 is the first one. Okay, moving on to B. We're going to do 90 divided by 12. So on your paper, put the number that goes inside the box. So inside the box is the first number. So we have 90 is our dividend divided by our divisor, which is 12. Okay. This is one, if you don't know your 12 multiplication facts, that's okay. Just make sure you have your multiplication chart and you practice it. So 12 does not go into 9, okay? but 12 goes into 90 how many times? I'm going to have guest speakers. How many times does 12 go into 90? Alex? Uh, 12 goes into 90 7 times. Good. So 7 on top of the 0. Then I multiply. What is 7 times 12? Everyone? 84. 84. Okay, so then we're going to subtract. 90 minus 84 is 6. So I've used all my digits, but I have a remainder, so I need to add a decimal and a zero. I bring up the decimal, and I bring down the zero. How many times does 12 go into 60? Five. Five. Five times. Five times 12 is 60. We subtract, and we get zero. Okay? So our answer, or our quotient, is 7.5. So that's practicing when you divide two numbers and your answer is a decimal, but the dividend and the divisor are both not decimals. So sometimes we, that happens quite often. Okay, moving on. So activity two helps us know how we can divide with decimals. So it says analyze the dividends, divisors, and quotients in the calculations, and then answer the questions. So we know inside the box is the dividend. So first I'm gonna focus on the dividends. I notice that this is 72, and then the next dividend is 720, so they just add a zero. 
Uh, when I add a zero, it's the same thing as times in by 10, right? So here from 720 to 7,200, now there's two zeros. So it's like from here to here, I times it by 10. Okay, here I see one more zero. There's three zeros this time. So I, from the left one to the right one, I multiply it by 10. So it says each dividend, meaning the number inside the box, is 10 times the dividend to the left of it. Okay, so 720 is 10 times as big as 72. 7,200 is 10 times as big as 720. Okay? Then question two on one number one says each divisor. The divisor is the number we're dividing by. Okay? Again, I notice it goes from 3 to 30. So in other words, 3 times 10 is 30, or it added a 0. 30 times 10 is 300, and 300 times 10 is 3,000. So the decimal point just moved to the right one time, and then we added a 0. So each divisor is 10 times the divisor to the left of it. Okay, then the last part says each quotient. Remember, quotient is the answer to the division problem. That's the one on top. So each quotient, I notice all of these are 24. All of these are 24. So when I multiply both the dividend and the divisor by the same number, my quotients ended up being the same. So each quotient, you could say, is the same as or is equal to the quotient to the left of it. I'm going to say is equal to. Then number two says, what would be the calculation to the right of 72,000 divided by 3,000? So this is 72,000 divided by 3,000. They're saying what division problem would be to the right of it. Meaning if I times it by 10, what would the division problem be? So if I times it by 10, I just add a zero to both the dividend and the divisor. So now I would have 720,000 divided by 30,000. So it's like I just moved the decimal to the right one time for both the dividend and the divisor. I know if I do that to both of them, my quotient is going to be the same. So my answer would also be 24. So that's the division problem that would go to the right of it. The division problem that would go to the left of 72 divided by 3. So here's 72 divided by 3. We're trying to think what problem would go to the left of it. So if I'm going to the right, I'm timesing each one by 10. If I go to the left, I'm going to do the opposite of timesing by 10, which is dividing by 10. So when I divide each the dividend and the divisor by 10, I move the decimal point to the left one time. So here's my 3. I move it to the left one time. So I could rewrite this problem as 7.2 divided by 0.3. And these are smaller numbers now, but since I divided both the dividend and the divisor by 10, my quotient is going to be the same. It's also going to be 24. So here's some different division problems that would all give us an equal quotient or an equal answer. So we are going to use that knowledge to do some division practice. So activity three is the divisor a whole number? So the whole point when we divide with decimals is we want the second number, the divisor, to be a whole number. And to do that, we need to move the decimal or multiply it by 10, 100, 1,000 to make it a whole number. And if we make this a whole number, then we need to move the dividend the same number of spaces. So we're going to be focusing on the divisors. Only the divisors need to be a whole number. The other ones might, the dividend might, but it may not. So it just has to be the same number of times. So the number that goes inside the box is 5.76. And we're dividing it by the divisor, which is 0 0.3. The divisor needs to be a whole number, and it is not right now. So I'm going to move it to the right one time, or in other words, times it by 10. So that means I need to move the dividends to the right one time, or times it by 10. So now my new problem is the same as 57.6 divided by 3. And you're welcome to pause and try to do it on your own and then um, check to see if you did it right. Okay, So 3 goes into 5 one time. 1 times 3 is 3. 5 minus 3 is 2. Then you bring down your next digit. 3 goes into 27 9 times. 9 times 3 is 27. Subtract and we get 0. 
So now I have my decimal right here in the new spot. So I bring it right up into my answer and bring down the next digit. And three goes into six two times. And two times three is six. Subtract and we get zero. So your quotient is 19.2. Okay, and make sure you put it in the right spot. Okay, next one. Again, this time, instead of drawing it out, I'm going to just try to make my divisor a whole number before I put it inside the box. Okay, so I'm going to move it to the right two times. One, two times, and now it's a whole number of 12. But that means I also need to move my dividend two times. One, two times. And there's a missing spot. So in that missing spot, I'm going to add a zero. So in other words, this problem is the same as 8,640 divided by 12. So I'm going to solve that problem. 8,640 divided by 12. Okay. So 12 doesn't go into 8. 12 goes into 86 seven times. 7 times 12 is 84. So then I'm going to subtract. 6 minus 4 is 2. Bring down the 4. 12 goes into 24 two times. 2 times 12 is 24. Subtract and I get 0. This part's important. A lot of times when people see that 0, they think they're done. But you still need to bring it down. So I'm going to bring down this 0. Okay. 12 goes into 0, 0 times. Okay. So now I've used all my numbers. So I have 0 and I've brought down all my digits. So my answer, since the decimal is right here, we would bring it up. But there's no number after the decimal. So I'm going to say my quotient is 720. Moving on to the third one, 7.5 divided by 1.25. Um, okay, this time, first I'm going to put my dividend inside the box, and I'm dividing it by 1.25. The number I'm dividing by needs to be a whole number, so I move it over one, two times. That means I need to move my dividend two times, one, two times. I'm going to place a zero for the missing place value. So in other words... This is like doing 750 divided by 125. Okay, so 125 doesn't go into 7. It doesn't go into 75. So this is one of those where you just have to figure out how many times does it go into it in the whole number. So how many times does 125 go into 750? And you can kind of guess and check. Um, since this is close to, I could count by 12s, 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72. So you might start by guessing that it goes into it six times, but you can always check, and if you're wrong, it's okay. You just kind of fix your checking or your guessing. Six times five is 30. Six times two is 12. 12 plus three is 15. Six times one is six plus one is seven. So 125 goes into 750 six times. So I'm going to put a 6 there. 6 times 125 is 750. And subtract and I get 0. So my quotient is 6 holes because my decimal would go up after the 6, but there's no number after. So I'm going to say my quotient is 6 holes. So we got to make sure our divisor, our second number, is, our, is a whole number, but however times you move that decimal point, you need to move the dividend as well. And that will help you get the right answer. Okay, to end, I'm going to treat this as a cool down. So you're going to try this on your own, and then you can check with the teacher to see if you got it right. Um, here's a tip to how to do it, just in case you forget. So thank you for watching the video, and thank you for this class for participating. Thank you.